If you want to see how we build our CNC, you're in the right place. Let's go. G'day guys, Kieran here from KJH Woodworking and welcome back to the channel. Today we have some really exciting stuff happening in the workshop. We are picking up a CNC. A bit of backstory on that. As business has grown and we've started to do more with the laser, we inquired about a CNC. So we actually reached out to a company called The Maker Store, which is a Melbourne based company here in Victoria, which is fantastic because it's only two hours away. So it's great to find a company that is local that can supply us with what we were after. I inquired about purchasing a CNC and they actually emailed back saying, hey, do you want to work together? And then we came to an agreement that involved us getting a discounted CNC. But one of the things that the maker store actually stipulated is they did not want to pay for a positive review. They just wanted to provide us with a discounted CNC for honest feedback and some content, which was fantastic from us because it worked well for them, worked well for us because we get a CNC, we get to show you all about it. And then we also get to give an honest review at the end, as well as an honest review on the build process, which was fantastic because we're all about providing honest quality content to all of our viewers. And we didn't want to feel that we were being paid to say, hey, this is a great product if it's not, but we'll get to that in the end. Now let's go get us a CNC. And this is what a three by one and a half meter CNC looks like, fire pack. Now let's go through the assembly. Let's get stuff out of these boxes and see what we're working with. Everything is individually wrapped in bubble wrap, which is sensational, particularly for transport. So nothing is gonna get damaged. I shouldn't say nothing, but it is a lot less likely to get damaged. The thing wrapped up like so. Now we're gonna just stack it, everything back in those boxes, get rid of all of the foam. I'm not gonna lie, everything's very neat, but that's for sure. The two year old of me. So now let's get stuck into the build. A couple of things about the build that we're gonna do here today. Firstly, this video and any of the other videos that I do regarding this CNC do not replace the instruction manual. The manual is sensational. It has so much good information and it runs you through step by step. I'm gonna be referring to the manual the whole way through this process because I've never built one of these. So the manual is there to guide you through I highly suggest you use it, otherwise there is no way you're gonna build this CNC. I'll give you a quick run through of how the manual works, but the manual is online, it's on their website. I'll link that in the description below, as well as we'll just jump on there quickly and show you how the manual actually works. Okay, so I've just jumped onto the Maker Store website just to give you an idea of what the installation guides look like. So I think one of the key things to note here is the updated April 5th, 2023. So that is five days ago. So they do keep this up to date and current with changes. They update as they go, but it basically walks you through a whole process step by step. So if you scroll down, you can see the index here where it walks you through each component. So if you're doing a 1000 1000 millimeter to 1500 millimeter model, you'd go to your gear rack where mine is a 3000 millimeter. So that brings us here. And then it walks you through step by step exactly what you need to do. So I will follow through this, this whole process and refer to this manual. Highly recommend you do the same as you go through and build your CNC. There are a lot of components to this CNC. So I've gone ahead and pulled out just the components needed for the Y axis. Everything else is still in the boxes behind me. We're just gonna focus on the Y axis. There's a bag per axis. You can tell which is which because the outside bag has a label on it just here. It says WBYG. Y meaning Y axis. So as long as you've got that, you're good to go. You don't want to start muddling up parts because you're just going to get confused and it's going to get messy really quickly. Let's bust out this back. The beautiful thing about this is every single bag is labeled, which corresponds to your instruction manual, which makes life so much easier. So step one, we're going to take our wheels and tip them all over the place. I mean, strategically place them right next to the bag so you don't get confused. So we need our wheels, our bearings, so here you go, this is how, this is why it's gonna get con really confusing really quickly if you don't stay organized. As you can see, so these are both bearings, look very similar. And if you dump everything out, mix up packs and whatnot, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna get your two bearings, different diameter holes. So take your time, keep everything organized, and it's gonna make your life a lot easier in the long run. So we're gonna take our wheels, our bearings, and our shims. So to assemble your wheel, you wanna take one of your wheels, one of your bearings, push it in position. Now I've used a five millimeter bearing. So I wanna drop a five millimeter shim in the middle and then push another five millimeter bearing over the top. And that should give me a wheel with a bearing on the inside. Now we're gonna repeat that with all of our wheels, keeping our five and our eight millimeter wheels separate. 
And the other thing is you want to make sure you're only using one shim in each wheel. I'm not going to recommend hitting these with a hammer, but if you want to save your hands, take a block of timber and just use the block to just push these in position because the block's not going to damage anything. But if you start smacking it with a hammer, you're probably going to cause yourself some damage. Now I've swapped bearings, so my bearing sizes. So now I'm going to take my other shim size. So I want to swap those to make sure I'm using the right size shim for the right size bearing. Again, one shim per wheel. So there, you get all your wheels, two different size bearings, keep them separate. Clean up your mess as you go, otherwise it's just gonna get messy. Messy and confusing. Okay, motor assembly plate. Plate, motor for your, oh, sorry, plate for your stepper motor. What I like to do is at each stage, refer to the manual because it gives you a breakdown of everything you will need for that section. Then you can go and get all of those components, put everything else aside, go ahead and assemble with just what you've got there. And it's just gonna keep things cleaner and tidier. Other cool thing about the manual versus your pack, I'm gonna look for those tap screws and then on the manual, it'll actually have the code that's on the label. So I can refer to here and go, okay, so I need a 30 mil. So we can screw M5 cap 30 once. That's a 16 one. So that's the wrong one. One of those ones. Exact same screw, different length. Quick and easy using the label on the front and the manual. And then you got low 30 mil low profile screws. So as you can see, for this step, none of that is required. That's not required. That's not required. These aren't required. Those aren't required. They're still required for this overall, but this is all we actually need for this particular part of the process. So if you work through it systematically, it's gonna be so much easier in the long run. And now you just work through step by step going through the process. So all I'm doing is taking the image from the manufacturer's guide and replicating that with the components that I've got. So I'm I'm gonna take plate, take my screw, feed it through the second hole up. Then on top of that is gonna go my bearing. Now to assemble your bearing, I don't know if you can see this on camera, you have a little groove that the bearing actually sits inside of on the, the washer, which the wheels roll on. So we'll drop that over. Now just loosely tighten this on until you can get everything else assembled. Just make sure you're doing up the bags as you go. Otherwise you're gonna get spillage and I'm not gonna say I'm speaking from experience here, but if you've ever put together a 3D printer, you understand. So effectively, that's what you're left with. So that's where you should be at now. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the spring, which will sit in between the two L brackets there. And again, now we'll pick out what we need for that next component. I've gone ahead and replicated it. So I now have two of those. I like to do it as I do the previous one because it's fresh in my mind rather than go through the whole process, then come back to the start and go again. I just find that works easier. Let's get stuck into the spring. We're just following the same instructions and it simply matched the picture to what you're doing. Simple as that. Again, I'm gonna go through and get all the components relevant to this step. So I get my 60 mils, my precision shims, and eventually you start to get the hang of the codes and everything because they're very similar. You just follow on those same steps as the instruction says and just assembling it all. I could be speaking too soon here, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm pretty much skipping the words and just viewing the pictures because they're so good. This, they are so straightforward. It's actually working out quite easily. At this stage, everything is just finger tight and we'll tighten it all off at the end. So hello everybody. How are you? No, 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 you gotta ask them how, you, how they are. They know you're good because you're smiling, but how are they? How are you? They're good, they told me. Welcome interruption, that's for sure. And I'll get back to the lovely viewers that are wanting to see me put together a C and C. Ah, oh, the joys of children. Okay, where were we? We're gonna go ahead and tighten all of these up now. Not super tight, just finger tight. Well, lightly mechanical tight, if you wanna say. You need a three mil Allen key, four mil Allen key, and eight millimeter banner. I like to get the Allen keys that have this sort of ring on the end, which just makes it super easy to tighten them. And I put the shim on the wrong side, which is causing all kinds of havoc. In that moment, I said, don't worry about the words. That was bad advice. Use the pictures and the words. Here and here from the future, the brackets aren't identical. So make sure you orientate them the right way. We'll show you here. See how one hole is closer? You wanna make sure the closer hole is what's fixing to the bracket. <coughs> 
So close hole fixing to the bracket, which will allow the spring to sit far off enough. It doesn't interfere with the bolts. That was frustrating. What are the chances that I got that the wrong way around on all four bolts? Actually, I don't want to know. There's still some bright sparks that I can comment one in four. Now we'll take our spring, thread that through with no interference from the bolts. Now we'll repeat that to the other one. Now that we've got both of those done, we will get stuck into the stepper motor. So first things first, you want to take your motor. For those who don't know, the stepper motor is effectively the motor that controls the CNC. We're going to take that out and then we're going to put the pinion on. So my particular unit is a rack and pinion setup rather than a lead screw setup, just with the longer length because I've got a three meter unit. They recommended using the a gear and pinion unit, sorry, the rack and pinion, which is effectively a pinion or a gear that runs along a racking system which moves the CNC rather than a screw that tightens and loosens. So first thing you want to do is put your gear onto your stepper motor. On the stepper motor there is a flat bladed section of the round shaft which is where the screw lines up with. So sit that in position then take your grub screw. Ooh, my number one fear, losing your screw. Probably going to be easier to start the grub screw off. Slide that in position and then tighten that down. This is a, appears to be a two and a half mil hex bit rather than the standard three mil of the rest has been. And just make sure you don't throw out your connectors. Keep them for later. We're gonna take the stepper motor and fix that in position using the threaded screws and threaded holes in the plate. Just make sure the cable's coming out the base of your stepper motor when you install it. Gonna make it a lot neater in the end. Now that we've got the stepper motor installed, let's add some wheels so it can roll along our excursion. So the instructions specifically say start with the bottom right. So we're gonna do exactly that. And again, I'm just marrying up the instructions here. The weird looking spacer, because I can't say that word, the rounded section needs to go and actually get inserted into the plate. Then onto that goes your wheel. If your bearing, see how the bearing, sorry, the spacer in the middle is closing off the hole. Just take a small Allen key and just position that so it's center. Now we are just gonna go ahead and lightly tighten that. We'll tighten it a lot further when we adjust it all later on. The wheel should be able to move freely. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the top right. For the M8 nuts, you're gonna need a 13 mil spanner. Again, I'm checking the wheels move freely. So as you can see, that is spinning nicely, but the bolt is nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten either because then you risk damaging your bearings. Snug is key. Now we'll go ahead and attach all of the wheels. Just systematically working through and checking that the wheels spin freely as you go. You don't want to get the whole CNC assembled and realize one wheel's not spinning properly and then have to find that wheel. So on these spaces, there's a little six millimeter lettering and as you can see, the hole is offset. So what you want to do is make sure that six millimeters, the lettering is facing down. So take your shifter and just rotate these until that lettering is facing down, which is going to open up the space between the two sets of wheels. So now I've got those letters face down on all of those, giving me maximum distance here. Now we want to go ahead and adjust the assembly to snugly fit the extrusion. So you could get your Y extrusion, which is in my case, three meters long. It's gonna be a pain in the neck to work with. So I'm gonna grab my X extrusion, which is like 200 mil long, easy to work with. It's gonna give me the exact same results because it's the exact same sort of extrusion. So you want to take your extrusion and then feed that very wheels over. You want to sit it so it's upside down. So you've got access to those, those spaces with the offset hole. So now what we're gonna do is just take our shifter and just tweak these ever so slightly, starting with the outside until we get a nice snug fit. So no wobble, but the channel is still able to move through there freely. In my case, about a quarter of a turn, that may vary. We've got that one spot on. Let's repeat the process. Okay, the final step in the Y axis assembly is to actually attach what we've just assembled to the extrusion channel. Easiest way I've found to do that is to prop it up slightly 
so that the wheels can actually clear underneath because it's going to sit something like that and it's going to hang down a little bit lower than the extruder. If you work it flat on a table, it's just not going to work. And the other thing where I actually deviate from the instruction manual is I will install one of my end caps first because I found that I kept knocking that T-nut out that you have to install at the end. It's really frustrating me. So let's grab some gear and head on down to the end. Okay, so what the instruction manual says to feed this T-bolt in from one end and then all of your racking in after it. What I found was easier is to just slot that in position, put your end cap on. Now head down to the other end and feed your racking in from that end. Depending on the size unit you've got, you may need to cut these down. They recommend about two millimeters protruding out for your end cap. But before we sit our end cap on, we will get our stepper motor installed. The stepper motor is simple to install, but the key is don't force it. First things first is make sure your gear is protruding out far enough that it's gonna catch onto that rack that we just installed. All you do is just loosen off that grub screw, pull it out a whisker, roughly so it lines up with the wheels. We can adjust it later. So we've just roughly lined that up with the wheels. We'll feed this on nice and gently. If you've got too much resistance, you can go back to those bottom nut and loosen them off to give you more space. So we've got that sitting in nicely. We'll throw some T-nuts in. I've no idea what these are for. I'm just following the instructions. So we'll just feed these bad boys in, making sure the flat side is face down. So we've got two each side on the bottom and then three in this first slot here. And the other thing you do want to do, which I probably shouldn't have told you to do before putting this cap on, is make sure that gear is running, I'm actually gonna have to pull this cap back off. So you wanna make sure that gear there runs center to the racking. Mine's currently off center, so I'm gonna adjust that before I feed that back on. Now we'll go ahead and repeat that exact same process on the other excursion, and that's a wrap on the Y axis. Now let's get stuck into the X. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get stuck into the X axis. I've done the exact same thing. I've laid out all of my components solely for the X axis. Everything else is still in the boxes behind me. We're just gonna focus on the X. Again, we're following through the instruction manual. Starting at the start, just working our way through for your particular unit. Mine might be slightly different to yours, so make sure you're using the instruction for your unit. So step one, let's start with prepping the wheels. Given that we just went through that X axis, we're not gonna go through that again now, given it's the exact same thing. Now we get on to mounting everything to the plate. So I've gone ahead and got all of my components that are solely related to the step that I'm gonna be working on. Now I go ahead and I can assemble everything quite easily. Beautiful, and that there is what you should be left with. Now we get onto the spring system. Again, we're gonna skip this. So we've got a little bit of pressure there, what we're looking for. Now we'll divert our attention to our stepper motor. Again, we've just done this, so we're gonna skip over it here. Now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the whole mechanism. So we'll install the wheels in between the two plates. Now with your spacers, just make sure the rounded side goes onto the plate so it actually seats inside the plate. And on there, there's a little word that says six millimeters. You wanna make sure that's facing down. So that's gonna give you the most space between your wheels for getting this installed. Just makes life a lot easier. You can adjust that later, so don't stress too much. And then you wanna tighten everything up. So the most important thing is to make sure the spaces that actually seat inside the plate are in fact seated inside the plate. So as you can see there, mine currently aren't. So we just want to wiggle that around until they're all seated inside the plate, which they are now. We'll tighten those up. Don't forget to set your wheel tension using the 300 millimeter of extrusion from the Z axis in the exact same manner we did the Y earlier on. Okay, this step is easier if you actually prop your extrusion up because then the wheels don't get in the way when you actually feed the step motor on. Uh, go ahead and install our lock, sorry, our sliding T-nut, and then we will feed through our racking. Just make sure you don't lose your T-nut at the other end. You may need to cut this down, depending on the size unit you've got. They say the ideal length is two mil millimeters hanging out the end. I've got about five, so I'll snip that off. Then we're gonna go ahead and install all of our T-nuts, making sure the flat side is facing out. These will all be used later. 
Then we can go ahead and load the step motor onto the C channel. Beautiful. Before you get too far, you want to make sure the gear is running center to the racking. As you can see, mine is currently offset. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that now before I get too far ahead of myself. And to do that, we're just going to loosen off that grub screw, slide the gear out, tighten the grub screw back up. Get that tightened. And now we will just feed that back on. Okay, now that we've got all of that assembled, we can get that attached to our Y axis. A little bit of help makes this a lot easier because being able to support both ends is a bit challenging. So I'm going to get some help over here. Okay, maybe grown up helps more appropriate, but it's working. Thanks, Squirtle. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some additional corner supports just for additional strength. The eight millimeter screws go into your T-nuts in the extrusion, 10 millimeters go into the plate. I find it easiest to screw everything into the extrusion first, then go ahead and do it into the plate. It saves me mixing and matching screws. And that's it for the X-axis. Next up, we'll do the Z-axis. Today, we're getting stuck into building out the X-axis and getting that installed on the unit itself. So let's get stuck in. So to start with, we're gonna get our components for this stage of the build, and we're gonna go ahead and mount the T-nut to the lineal rail. So we're just gonna go ahead and get these started. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat that a second time. So we've got two of these. So now we should end up with two that look very similar to that. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach the linear rails to the extrusion. To do that, we're just gonna line up the T-bump, feeding it through one at a time. T-nut, I should say. You may need to loosen them off if you tighten them too far. There is no easy way to do this on camera, so I'm gonna to have to go back to laying it down flat. It helps you put the T-nuts on in facing the correct direction, it makes life a bit easier. Now let's see if this slides in a little bit easier. Still not easy to do on camera. Now sit it firm down on something, and then we can tighten those up. And now repeat with the other side. From there, we can slide on the four bearings. So the bearings actually come with a plastic retainer on so that the actual ball bearing inside doesn't fall out. So the best way to install these is to actually line up the retainer and then slide it over rather than taking that out. If you lose one of those bearings, you're in trouble. Now we're just gonna set that aside while we work on the lead screw. We're gonna grab all of our components that we require. And again, we are just taking our time to make sure all the components marry up with the picture in the instruction manual. Taking our time to make sure we get it all correct. So this is what you should be left with, something similar. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach that lead screw to the gantry over here that we assembled earlier, which is simply a whole heap of screws. And you should be left with something that looks something like this. Now just be careful moving it around that you don't allow those bearings to slide off because you're in strife if you do that. Now we're going to go ahead and install the end plates. Basically just take the plate and screw those off with the corresponding screws. We're then going to install the two lock collars on the lead screw. Put the grub screws in while you've got easy access to those lock collars. Feed that over the lead screw. Then the bearing goes over. Slide it down. Do the same at the top. Lock collar, bearing. Now position it so that the bearing seats inside the end cap. Then tighten up your lock collar and then do the same at the top edge. But you want to position it so the bottom, the lead screw is flush with the bottom plate and it's protruding out the top of the top cap. So now the lead screw can spin freely, but it's not actually sliding up and down. And you can see down there how that bearing is actually seated inside the end cap. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach the stepper motor to the lead screw. So you're gonna take your stepper motor, you're gonna slide your jaw coupling on, so the smaller hole fits over the stepper motor, and then your larger hole fits over your lead screw. At this stage, don't tighten anything down. Why? Because the instructions say so. I don't actually know why yet. We'll work it out together. Then we're going to put our spacer blocks in between and fix that into position. And you just want your cabling to come back out of your stepper motor on the same side as the plate. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Now that we're in position, sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the jaw coupling up. Well, now that we're in position, we're gonna take four 12 mil cap screws over to the X axis, and we will get these matched on and move on to the spoil board. And that is the Z axis complete. Now it's time to whack the spoil board onto the base frame. 
Okay, let's crack on with the final stage of the mechanical assembly of the WorkBee CNC with the spoil board. Now, I'm not talking about the timber spoil board. I'm talking about the substructure that will eventually hold your spoil board, which needs to go on to keep everything square. So we're gonna dive straight in and it is as simple as attaching a front and back rail using some little brackets here and the T-nut. We already installed the T-nuts in the excursions at the start. Now we're just gonna go ahead and install them in the front and back rails and mount it all on. One thing to note with the brackets, the holes are not spaced in the same spots. So you wanna make sure the ones that are closer to the outside are mounting to your C channel or your C beam up the sides and the ones that are closer to the internal mount into the actual rails. So I found it easiest to fit the T-nuts loosely to the brackets on the center holes. So loosely fit that on. Then we'll jump underneath and we'll mount that bracket to the T-nuts that we've already slid into the C beam. Repeat on the other side, and then you can actually feed the C channel over the T-nuts, which just makes it so much easier to fit as a one-man band. Now you wanna flush the front of the extrusion up with the front cap, tighten those off, just tightening the top ones for the moment, because that will still allow us to move it back and forth. We'll do the same on the other side. Now I found it easiest to get my spacing by pulling the gantry all the way down to the end, because I know this measurement can't change. If I've got this positioned in the right spot down the end here, and then I position my rail to the center, center as possible. Then I know that's in the right spot. I can tighten this off. I do just make sure that I'm putting pressure up on the underside to close up any gap here because I want the support to be nice and sturdy. The other thing I do like to do now, being a woodworker and a carpenter, I like to keep everything as square as possible throughout the whole build rather than fix it at the end. We are going to go through a squaring process at the end when we go to commission the unit, but if we keep it square now, it's going to make our life a lot easier. Now that we've got the front and back rails on, we can actually take these blocks out that are lifting the unit up because the wheels will no longer catch. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our internal rail supports. So we're gonna go ahead and mount a L bracket in the channel there, making sure the hole that's closest to the edge is being mounted in our channel. And we wanna mount that 10 millimeters in from this outside edge. The easiest way to do that would be to use a packer, something that you know is 10 mil. So I'm just gonna use a combination square, but you could use a window packer, you could use a carpenter's ruler, whatever works. So we'll just set that in position, tighten that off. And then on the side here, you've already put your T-nuts in earlier. We're just gonna loosely tighten that in. And once we've got all three rails in place, we're gonna evenly space them before securing them firmly. And then from there, we just wanna make sure that the gain tree does not catch on it. But I'm, so as long as you're 10 mil in, you're fine. Once we've got all of those supports mounted, we'll go ahead and take our end caps and mount them to the four corners just to neaten everything up. And that, my friends, is a wrap on the mechanical build of this project. So we have gone ahead and assembled the entire CNC. Now we're on to the wiring and commissioning of the unit. If you like this video, I've got anything out of it, smash that like button. If you want to see the rest of the build, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. Otherwise, I'll leave the next part of the build series on the screen now, and we will catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.